Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Teardown. Today we're going to be tearing down the Asus ROG Keras 2 Ace. Now as I talked to my review, this mouse was actually not too bad. It did have some critical flaws, mainly its coding, but overall for a mouse being released by a big brand, this mouse was actually pretty solid. And one area where this mouse really excelled in my opinion is its serviceability. As commonly speaking, mice from big brands tend to be more on the unserviceable side. So this was a nice change of pace here with the Keras 2. So in today's video, as as per usual, we're going to do a full teardown here on the Keras 2 Ace and show you guys how to fully disassemble and reassemble the unit, relube the click stabs, and pretty much do everything you might ever need to do for this mouse. But before we get into it, as always, you will need a couple things for your teardown. Firstly, having a precision screwdriver set is very helpful. Also, having a little plastic pry bar is also very helpful for getting the mouse open. Now, most of the screws inside the Keras are pretty standard size. They're just Phillips heads. They're just a little unique in terms of their sizing. So having some different size bits is going to be very helpful. Secondly, having Having somebody to keep track of your screws like an ice cube tray is also very helpful. And lastly, a microfiber cloth or a magnetic mat to help keep your mouse in place while you do your teardown. But once you have all this, you are ready to go ahead and start your teardown, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Alright, now the first thing you're going to have to do here is remove your stock skates. Now you only need to remove the bottom ones because the only two access screws are here and here, but it is a little difficult to remove the stock skates themselves because as you can see there is no skate removal ramps on this mouse, so you will either need a flathead screwdriver bit or a pry tool to take them off. Now of course I've already removed mine, but make sure you at least remove these two bottom ones before you tear your mouse down. So next up, once those are off, we can go ahead and remove these two base screws. And then once that's done, as per usual, we can take two of our fingers and make kind of a claw and go ahead and put pressure on the sides of the mouse here and here. And with a little bit of pressure, you can see the back kind of start to open up there. And then you can take a fingernail or a pry tool and run it along the side of the mouse. Now towards the top of the mouse, you will need to remove these two little clips here because they just hang in here a little tightly. So I'd recommend taking a fingernail and just running it around the front here to separate this. But once you've disconnected this, you can go ahead and remove the two shells just by pulling the shell up and off just like that. Now that we've got this open, let's put the base off to the side for now and let's focus on the top shell first. Now the top shell is actually going to be a little easier than it commonly is when we do teardowns because as you can see here on the side, the side buttons are actually kind of glued into the side of the shell where they're kind of burnt on the plastic ends there. So you can't actually remove these side buttons from the shell, which is kind of odd. Now it does kind of suck if you wanted to mod these out or put a coating on them, so you can't do that, but it is a little unique to see non-removable side buttons. Hopefully on the next Keras we'll see this change so you can remove them, but it is what it is. What we can remove is the main clicks, and we can do that by removing a screw from here and a screw from here. And once you have them out, you can just go ahead and take a fingernail and pull up here and pull up here. And with a little bit of force, the click will just come out of the shell just like that. We'll do the same thing to the next one. And there you go, both your main clicks are out. Now before I move on, I want to make a quick note here. If you want to re-lube these stabilizers, you can do it by taking them out and lubing them manually, or you can do them while they're inside the shell. They will poke out of the shell here and here, so you can either re-lube it there or take them out and re-lube them manually. Doesn't really matter whatever way you do it. And with those removed, that is everything we can do for the top shell here, so we'll go ahead and put that off to the side. And now we can focus on the base. Now, as I mentioned in the full review, the base design here for the Keras is quite unique as it's using a cage design, which is something we don't commonly see on many Ergo mice. So the disassembly process here is a little more complicated than usual, but I will walk you guys through the whole process. The first thing we have to remove here is this little top box here. And we can do this by removing a screw from here, a screw from here, and one from here, and one from here. And then once that's removed, you also have to go ahead and disconnect these side buttons and the battery. Now the battery can be a little finicky because it's kind of in a bit of an awkward spot but just get a fingernail under the side here and just try and wiggle the connector off just like that and then we can also disconnect the side button PCB here by reaching on the sides here and pulling up this little connector like that and then once it's out you can just gently pull the cable out and then once that's done we have another unique aspect is we have this back piece here now this is the dongle storage on the back of the mouse but it's actually clipped into the shell by these tiny little clips on the sides here now it's going to be really hard to show this but basically you kind of have to pinch this off and pinch it up if that makes sense just like that. And then once that's disconnected, this is gonna sound a little crazy, you actually have to rotate this entire piece up and 
over the shell like this to remove it, which is kind of wild. And then once you have it folded over like this, you have to remove the scroll wheel by just gently pulling out like this, and you can remove this. And that is how you remove this cage piece from the bottom shell. Now, before I move on, I wanted to make a quick note here. If you do want to remove the scroll wheel, you can do so by unscrewing this little thing here, which is the RGB header on the inside of the scroll wheel. And you can pull that out an angle and then pull the scroll wheel out. But just because these cables are extremely fragile, I'm not going to take it out for this video. And I would recommend not taking this off unless you absolutely have to, as these cables are extremely fragile. Now with the top cage part out of the way, let's go ahead and put that off to the side for now. And let's talk about the rest of the base here. Now to remove the main board, this is going to be pretty easy. Actually, all we have to do is remove a screw from here and two screws up at the top of the unit here and here. All right. And then with those removed, you can go ahead and peel the board up from the back here and just gently lift the main board off of the base, just like this. Again, very, very easy to do. So we'll go ahead and put that off to the side for now. And then for the base here, there really isn't anything else to take off here aside from the slider button that may come off. And if it does so, it'll come off in this position like this. And if it does fall off, you wanna make sure you remount it into the shell with this piece facing outward on the shell. So it will slot back in just like that. But again, just leave it in place for now. We'll talk about this more later. All right, now that we've taken everything apart, let's talk about components. So first off on the top shell here, we do have a 300 milliamp hour battery. Now you can actually remove this because it is just strapped in by a piece of tape here and you will have to add some adhesive to the bottom. But I would advise against this as there are some very delicate ribbon cables are running around the battery. So I would avoid taking it unless you absolutely have to. But if you do need to replace the battery, it is doable. You just need to be careful when doing so. We also have the kale black shell green dot switches here for the side switches. Again, I talked about these in my full review. I'm not a big fan of these switches. I would have much rather seen TTC brown shell blue dot switches or a lighter switch here but regardless they're present here a bit of a unique thing though is that the board doesn't have a connector for the ribbon cable it's actually built into the board which is quite unique and something i haven't seen before but this kind of tech is something you kind of expect from more flagship mice from bigger brands and then for the board here we have the rog aim point sensor which is just a modified version of a pixar 3950 we have our battery connector side button ribbon cable connector we have a nordic 52840 mcu here we have a ttc 14 millimeter encoder for the scroll wheel and we have the rog optical switches here. Now, as I mentioned in my full review, these are actually hot swappable, which is something very unique I have not seen before. And you can remove them by just taking a fingernail and pulling on the outside here, gently of course and the switch will pop right off the board and there you have your switch. This is something, again, I did not expect to see on an OEM mouse, specifically an ASUS mouse, but this is something really cool to see because if one of these switches does fail, even though they have a 10 million click lifespan, you can just replace the switch, not the whole board or not have to desolder a switch, which is really cool to see. And then if you wanna put the switch back in, you can go ahead and take the switch and make sure these pins are oriented correctly. You wanna have this little red thing facing forward and then to put it over the two little X's in the board here, and then once it's roughly in place like this, you can flip the board over and just simply push them into place just like that. And there are your main click switches re-anchored very easily. All right, well, now that we've talked all about the components here on the Keras 2, let's go ahead and talk about weight. Starting off, we have the base of the unit with its button still installed, which weighs in at around 8.7 grams. Next, we have the top shell with the side buttons installed, which weighs around 13.8 grams. We have our two main clicks, which weigh 5.2 grams. We have the central cage with the battery side button, PCB, scroll wheel, and all the other attachments on here. And this collectively weighs in at 13.5 grams, which is actually quite light. We have our main board, which weighs in at exactly 10 grams. And we have all the miscellaneous screws for the unit, which weigh in at a cumulative 0.8 grams. All right, now that we've talked about component weights and all that fun stuff, let's go ahead and start our reassembly process. First off, we're gonna start off with the base of the mouse. Now, the base here is gonna be pretty straightforward. Again, if this little piece does happen to fall out, you wanna reconnect it into the shell where this tiny little piece is facing the outside of the mouse. So it should slide in just like this and just make sure it's sitting flat. Because on the base of the board, there is a control switch here. We're gonna put this into the bottom most orientation and we're gonna go to our board here. We're also going to put this switch into its bottom most orientation. You can potentially break the switch, which will render your entire unit inoperable. So be very, very careful and make sure you orient this properly. Again, put this to the lowest most position and this one to the lowest most position as well. Now, if you did remove one of the main clicks, also I'd take a moment just to press them down to make sure they're fully anchored properly to make sure they are still working. And then once you've verified everything is proper. Again, double check to make sure this is the lowest most orientation and this slider is also the lowest most orientation. We can go ahead and drop this onto the board. And this is very easy to do. So as this central hole in the motherboard corresponds to this little standoff here. So all you do 
is just drop it into place just like that and it should anchor itself in. You can check this by putting your thumb on top of the board and shifting it around and it should sit completely flat. And then once the main board's in place, you can go ahead and re-put in your anchoring screws. One of them went here and there were two up at the front here. Just be very careful when you put these in not to over tension them because if you over tighten them, you can cause the base to warp. So be very careful in putting these in and don't over tension them. All right, and then once you put the screws in, go ahead and put your mouse on a flat surface and just make sure it's sitting completely flat. Again, if you over tension these, you can cause the base to wobble a little bit. Once that's done, we have to go ahead and put back on this entire cage structure here. Now, this is actually a lot easier than it looks. All you have to do for this is take the thin end of this scroll wheel and fit it into the hole in the encoder. So you can do this by just roughly lining it up kind of like this. And then once it's roughly lined up with the encoder, you can just go ahead and gently press it into place just like that. And then once that's done, you literally rotate this entire piece back over just like this. Again, make sure you give it time to properly settle. Again, you don't want to strain it too much in case you break the scroll wheel, but it should naturally sit into place. And you can loosely anchor this whole structure by just pressing in the storage compartment here on the back onto these little clips. Once this is loosely anchored into place, just double check to make sure your scroll wheel is still functional. If it still scrolls, you're good to go. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and re-put in the anchoring screws that went here, here, here and here. Just keep in mind, you may need to press down on this entire little structure just to hold it into place while you anchor your screws. Again, avoid pressing near the ribbon cable. I'd press up towards the top of the battery just like this. And then once that's all anchored in place, just make sure there's no wobbling on this central cage here. If it's not anchored properly, your side buttons may not align with the side buttons on the top shell, so make sure you do this properly. And then once you've verified everything is good to go, we can go ahead and reconnect the side button connector, which we can do by making sure this is in the open position. And then what you can do is put this battery cable out of the way is gently slide in the black side of this encoder into the inner part of this connector. So just gently line it up into place and slide it in. If it doesn't go down, just grab it with your fingernail and just gently press down. You want it to sit in roughly like this. Make sure that the plastic is kind of even with the standoffs here for the board and then just go ahead and clip it into place just like that. Once the side button ribbon cable is in place, we can go ahead and reconnect our battery, which can be a little finicky as this connector is a little hard to get it wired back into. But once you get it roughly in like that, you can just take your fingernail and press it down and double check to make sure it's sitting even on both sides because if the other side isn't making proper contact your mouse may not turn on. Now before we do anything else I'd recommend flipping your unit over, turning your unit on and verifying all the features on the mouse still work. So verify that your main clicks are still functioning, verify your scroll wheel and most importantly verify your side button. If your side buttons are not working reseed this ribbon cable here. If your main clicks aren't working you will need to reseed them. The scroll wheel should be okay as long as you didn't mess with anything on the inside here it should just go back in normally but just make sure everything is functional before you put the unit back together. Once you've verified everything is functional on your unit, go ahead and turn the unit off and we can go ahead and start working on the top shell next. Now the top shell is going to be pretty straightforward as there was only two things we could take out of this entire thing, which are the main clicks here. To do this, we're going to take the main click and feed it in through the bottom here. And you kind of have to bend them a little bit to get their stabilizer over this and then push them up and pull them in and that should line them up with their standoffs here and then you can press them into place. Normally I don't like manhandling clicks like this but you do have to bend them slightly to get them into place here. And we'll do the same process here for this one. We'll go in through the bottom, up and over like that and just press them into place. Once you've anchored them in, you can go ahead and put back in the two retention screws for them, but be very careful with these. Do not over tension these screws. If you over tension them, you will break your mouse. You want to screw them in until you feel a little bit of feedback from the screw. Once you hit that, stop. And then once your two anchoring screws are back in, verify to make sure your clicks are still functional. So you can tap on them like this and they should have a natural kind of buoyancy to them as you can see here. If your clicks are stuck up in the air like this, you've likely over tightened these screws, which means your main clicks are broken. And if they're sitting down and don't have that buoyancy like this, it means you've under tightened them, which means you can give these two screws another turn or two to fully anchor them. But once you have that done, that's everything for the top shell. We can go ahead and reassemble the mouse next. Now to do this, this is pretty easy. All you do is literally just line up the shells on top of each other. They'll just kind of naturally sit flat like this. And then I like to put the mouse in my palm like this and take my other hand. And you'll hear that click and that means they have made contact. Once you've done that, run your thumb along the side of the mouse to make sure everything has made contact. As you can see here up at the top, it hasn't made full contact. We'll click that into place and then that is everything there. 
Now, before you put the base screws in, again, turn your unit on and verify all your buttons are working, verify your main clicks are functional, verify your side buttons are working, verify your scroll wheel, just to make sure there's no weirdness happening with the top shell sitting on the base shell. Once you've verified that's all functional as well, go ahead and turn your unit back off and put in your two base access screws. And then with your two base screws in, go ahead and put your mouse on the table and just make sure the base isn't uneven. Sometimes if you over tension these screws, you can cause a little bit of warping on the base. Once you've verified that the base is sitting completely flat, you can go ahead and reinstall your stock skates. And that is everything you need to do to tear down the ROG Keras Ace 2. As I mentioned at the top of this video, overall this is actually a very surprisingly serviceable mouse. Commonly mice from bigger brands tend to be rather unserviceable. I'm looking at you Alienware. But this is actually a welcome surprise. This is a very easy to service unit. Again, it is a little more complex than other teardowns we've done before, but this is a surprisingly easy to service unit. And I love that the main clicks are hot swappable. That is an amazing feature. And if you need to replace the battery or any other components on this mouse, it's going to be fairly easy to do so, which is a great thing to see. So props to Isus there. But sadly, as I talked about my full review, while this unit is surprisingly serviceable, it does have a lot of other flaws with it, specifically its lack of coating and side buttons. But hopefully we'll see the same level of repairability on a future version of the Keras. As again, I do actually like this mouse quite a bit. It is a very good mouse in my opinion. It just has some unfortunate flaws that make it very hard to recommend. But as I just said, I really hope we see the same level of serviceability on a future version of the Keras, and hopefully we'll see those hot swapple main switches again too. But that is going to be everything for today's episode of Teardown. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks again to Azers for sending over the Keras 2 Ace for review. I greatly appreciate it. Big thank you to our channel members who make what I do here on the channel with the Teardown Project and of course the in-depth reviews possible. If you'd like to support what I do here on the channel, you can become a channel member here for only two Canadian dollars a month. That is one of the best ways to directly support the channel. Or you can use code MELON over at Lethal Gaming Gear, Potent Gaming Gear, and MetKeys to save yourself some money off your orders and help support the channel. But that's everything for me today. Thank you again for watching my Teardown of the ROG Keras 2 Ace, and I'll catch you all in the next episode of Teardown. Peace.